Good morning. It's another Lord's Day. Greetings to you from First Baptist Church at Cave Springs, Arkansas. My name is Ernest Lostavica. We will be in a special place in the Bible today. The first page, the first chapter, the first few verses of the whole Bible, the Word of God. What a place to start. Even the very beginning of it tells us that it is the beginning. But anyway, I hope this Lord's Day finds you in good health and in good spirits. Uh, God made this day especially for you and for himself, that on this day above all days, all humanity could fellowship with him with no earthly distractions, to rest with him from all works and worship the Creator. I hope today we can get a clearer picture of God, God himself, for without an understanding of the Almighty God, we cannot grasp an understanding of his great love for humanity. God is omnipotent, a big word that says he's all-powerful. There's nothing he can't do, and there's nothing that he's unable to do. He's ever-present, always was, always will be. God is eternal. As we read today's lesson, verse by verse, line by line, precept by precept, maybe he will allow us to more, give us more insight into what we call his creation. Without any further ado, let's just take it to him in prayer that he would show us his word in a way that we've never seen it before. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to go out into the cyber world, Lord God, with your word that anyone who has a will to listen can hear. And Father, we always give you the praise but we praise you for your word that you left with us. Your word which tells us everything that we need to know about you, your son, Jesus Christ, and your Holy Spirit. Lord God, help us to be amazed at who you are, to know that you are holy in the full meaning of that word, that you are perfect, and that you still love us imperfect people. Father, we thank you again for the forgiveness of sin, and in his name now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's read the first verse and stay there just for a few minutes. It says, in the beginning, this is Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning, how else would you start it? But you could put a period right behind the next word. In the beginning, God. God, the all-powerful being, the creator of all things, who always was, and is, and will be, is beyond human comprehension that he has always existed. We can't fathom that because we're time-oriented creatures. We like to see a beginning, and then we can see the end. We have no beginning and no end in God the Father, the creator of the universe. But it's a stated fact that he is eternal. And on that single fact, we then see that God is that creator of all things. Dreaming human beings uh, base the formation of the universe on assumptions and theories that assume that something cannot be made from nothing. The theory of evolution, for example, that somehow an assumption Somehow, all the matter of space congealed into the planets of the universe. One thing led to another, and in eons and eons of time, that thing that we are so associated with, life came about in some one-celled organism from chemical matter. The further back they imagine, the less they have to work with, till they come to Sometimes saying, well, it all started with a speck of dust, a speck of cosmic dust. And they say that was the beginning. Well, where did the speck of dust come from? Where did the cosmos come from? It had to be God, because the word says, in the beginning, God. God is the foundation. God did everything 
from nothing because he's supernatural and he's capable. Where did the dust come from? Where did this cosmos come from? It came from God. The word of God states a fact. God is the beginning. He's also the end. He is the Alpha and Omega from Jesus' own mouth, the Son of God, the eternal God-man. God made flesh in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in form of a man, yet he was God. And he said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning. I am the end. And he is. Verse 1 also says, he created the heaven and the earth. God is all-powerful. He is the one who created all from nothing through his own will and by his own will and for his own good pleasure. Verse 2, then it says, The earth was without form, and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Well, without form and void, let's just say God created all the raw materials that he was going to use in the days of creation. He needed to build upon, and he used those things that he'd already created. Uh, if you think about all the atomic particles, all the elements of the periodic table, all the supplies he needed to build the universe, including air and water. If you remember some of your uh, physics classes in high school, you saw the atom described as a, a basic particle of all matter is composed basically of atoms, but that atom has neutrons and protons and electrons, and they all kind of turn around and around that nucleus of the atom. Does not the universe look like that in a great, great, great expanse of that? God does things with a plan, and that plan followed through into all creation. All the supplies he needed was created in that first verse. It said, God created the heaven and the earth. He piled up all his stockpile of raw material and he was ready to build. But he said, the universe was dark. It was including air and water. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters in total darkness. God discerned that light would be needed. Well, now that God has all the material needs to perfect the earth, building and creating a perfect place for himself besides heaven, in that first day now we see the power of God's spoken word. Verses 3 through 5. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And, call, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Well, when we read that, we take note here on the first day, God himself is the light. Created the earth, heaven, created the earth, and he created his own light, prototyped his own light for the earth. He foresaw the necessity of a daily cycle for the earth of darkness and light. He would place the sun and moon and stars later. God foresaw the darkness of the world spiritually because he is a spirit. John 1 and 9 says, That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. God is the architect of the universe and he envisioned a perfect creation for his own good pleasure and he created it one step at a time and literally did it in six worldly days. Today, humanity says, impossible. You can't do all that that we, we think took billions and billions of years. But Jesus said, and remember who Jesus is, Jesus is God in the flesh. He said, with God, nothing is impossible. How did he do it? He spoke. When he said, let there be light, it didn't even take a second. It didn't even take a second. As he spoke the words, it appeared. So verse 5 tells us, the evening and the morning were the first day. A lot of creation 
in that first day. Yet, he rounds it out, and we move on. We move on to verses 6 through 8. The second day, God said, Let there be a firmament, firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Firmament. He used that word four or five times there. We need to know what that means, don't we? Well, God spoke, and the firmament is an old word for us today, but it simply means a form of support. If you build a, we call them foundations today, but anything that holds up something up, it's a, uh, a firmament, it's a rafters on the house is a firmament for the roof, so to speak. Well, the firmament that he's speaking of here is the sky, the atmosphere, and that atmosphere around this earth supports much, much, much more water than we have on the earth. The earth itself is over two-thirds water, oceans, lakes, rivers, streams, but there's more of it in the sky than there is on the land, on the earth. The under firmament, that's the earth, supports all the oceans. The, the earth itself supports all that water, lakes, rivers, all the ice and snow. But the atmosphere where the clouds are supports all the water in the form of water vapor. And he did that on the second day. Verse 8 says so. It says, God called the firmament heaven. We would call it the sky. We call it the atmosphere. It's where we look up and see blue. God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Then we move on. Verses 9 through 13. God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. So all that water that was left on the earth began to recede, moved back, and exposed the high places of the earth, uh, and the land was exposed. Let the waters under the heaven, that's the ones that we see on the earth, be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters he calls he sees, and God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. Well, we now have land and sea. How did he do that? He spoke it. God spoke, and we had land, we had oceans, and God called it good. Verse 11 spoke again and said, there's vegetation. Now there's vegetation. This is important. He didn't make one plant, and from that plant mutated millions of species of plants. He created millions of different kinds, and they reproduced after their own kind. God leaves nothing to chance. He is a perfectionist. Read verse 12 again with me. The earth brought forth grass, herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Everything comes by seed, and the seed always reproduces a perfect replica of whatever the plant was to begin with. And verse 12 says it was the third day. Verses 14 and 19, wow, look at that. God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. 
And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Just how important is this planet Earth to our Creator God? It must be very, very, very important for Him to begin His creation with this specific place, this specific planet that we call Earth. He had a plan for it. All the other planets that are not mentioned, they're just there to enhance this Earth. They're there to form we don't know the reasons for them yet, but someday we will when the time comes when God needs them. But right now, he's creating a place for his greatest accomplishment, and it's going to be on the sixth day. But here we are in the fourth day, and the fifth, just how, just how much it shows God wanted a place for his good pleasure and it was going to be a perfect place in the universe. And he lavished great attention upon it. He made the sun to keep it warm and to light it by day. He made the earth to spin one revolution per 24 hour period to expose all sides of the sun for its daily dose of sun. He made the moon so that there would no longer be total darkness in the night. And all the vastness of the universe is immeasurable Yet the earth is all important to God. At the end of verse 16, almost as an afterthought it seems, billions and billions and billions of night lights, and it just says he made the stars also. His concentration was on the earth, but he put all these other things in there to enhance it. We don't we're not able to go outside anymore because of the population and all the electric lights at night. But if you get on a mountain somewhere out in the desert where there's no people, no cities, and you get up on a high mountain, then you're overwhelmed with this celestial light that comes from the stars. It's overwhelming, amazing, but that's our God. And he made it all for this planet Earth. Verse 19 says, this was the evening and the morning were the fourth day. He keeps saying that it's a 24-hour cycle. And he did all these amazing things in each day. Verses 20 through 23, God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought, brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply. He made the animals, and then he didn't make a whole bunch of them like them because those animals reproduced, and they reproduced after their kind, and they did it and have been doing it now for all these thousands of years. Fill the earth, fill the waters and the air with these specific creatures on the fifth day, the creatures of the sea, fish, whales, porpoises, all those animals that live in the water, and the birds that fly in the air, and also the birds that walk around on the land, the birds and the fish in the sea. And he said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the air. The evening and the morning, fifth day. We're moving right along. Verses 24 through 25. God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind cattle, creeping thing, beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth on the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. 
we cannot sometimes imagine the animal kingdom in its immensity. All the air-breathing animals were done on this day. Mammals, reptiles, insects, also amphibians, all that we see today in kind. A cat is a cat, a dog is a dog, a mouse is a mouse, a horse a horse, a sheep a sheep, a goat a goat, and so on and so on and so on. Yes, there are now thousands of varieties of dogs and cats and horses and all those things, but the species is still the same. The kind can only reproduce its own kind. Even in the basic, basic uh, mouse and rat, the uh, uh, squirrels and rabbits and all those, uh, what do they call rodents? They can't interbreed. They're, they can only breed. Rabbits breed rabbits, squirrels breed squirrels, mice mice, and rats rats. They don't interbreed. They reproduce their own kind. Verse 25, God saw that it was good. Everything was in order in the animal kingdom. Well, let's look at verses 26 through 28. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creep upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. God makes human beings modeled after himself. Let us make man in our own image, he said. Who are the us? God, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In fact, if you go to the first chapter of the book of John, John tells us the same thing about the beginning. Very close to what we read in verse 1. It said, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. Who is this word? That's the Lord Jesus Christ. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. How important is the Lord Jesus Christ, whom we call Lord, and who started his work on earth as a man, a man God, and we that follow him are called Christ-like. Christians. Well, God makes human beings modeled after himself, and Jesus Christ was the perfect image of a man, and God too. Well, that image of God is what differenti differentiates a human being from all mammal life. God made us special so we could have fellowship with the Father in heaven, with this awesome God who made this universe who is, we still don't understand it all. We still haven't seen it all. We've only seen the edge. And astronomers, um, astrophysicists, all those people say that the space out there where the planets are and the stars are goes out for billions and billions of miles. Well, that's the God that we worship. And that's the God that said, let there be light. That's the God that took nothing and made it all. He's able, he's capable, he is God. Verse 26 says, God designed the human race to have dominion. That means we have rulership and authority over all the earth and all that we are to do with it is supposed to honor God. Designed us to have dominion, to have authority over all this earth and its creatures. The human was to be as other creatures, male and female. Verse 27, let's read that again. 
So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. There's no getting around it. And then in verse 28, God blesses humankind. Be fruitful, etc., etc. Moving on to verses 29, 31. God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of the tree yielding seeds, to you it shall be for meat. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. What have we seen so far in six days? Just about everything was done. Just about everything was done. Well, God provides for man. He provides for all these creatures that he made. He provides a life for the plant, the fishes, the birds of the air. Nothing is left out. Even today, we read in Philippians 4:19 says, but my God shall supply every need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Nothing that we need is not supplied by God. There's no other creature on earth more special to God than you are today. You are his creation, created especially to be similar to him. He wants you to love him more than life itself. When you're reading your Bible and you read John 3.16 and the verses before it and then the verses after it, it shows that God loves you and me enough to see his own son die to pay for our sinful nature so that he once more can fellowship with us in eternity. He loves us that much that he would give his life so that we could live with him forever. God made us in his image for his good pleasure by simply accepting the word of God by faith, believing and obeying his will through his son Jesus Christ. Someday soon, God will once again tell believers the words of verse 28. And he will establish his kingdom on earth and pronounce it is very good. Verse 31 here we see the sixth day. God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. God looked at all his creation, and he was pleased. He said, this is going to work. This is going to work. Then we move on to chapter 2, verses 1, 2, and 3. And remember what God did how he spoke all creation into existence, all the universe, all life, everything that we take for granted, he spoke it into existence. And now we see that he spoke it and it happened. And because he's God, it's possible. How did it happen in six days Six 24-hour days, simply because God did it. God said it. He gave us the word. His word moves from this first beginning chapter of Genesis through the book of Revelation. Everything that he said was true, is true, and will be true in the future. Why do we set it aside? We need that truth more than anything. Even today, God's word still speaks. It said, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day, sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Do you think God got tired? No, nope, that's not what that means. God finished. Finished, there was nothing left to do. He sat back and said, okay, this day 
is sanctified forever now. It is the seventh day, and it will be set aside, sanctified for mankind and my relationship with him. Even today, God's world still speaks. It changes the hearts of men and women daily. Because God speaks, we believe, and that faith gives eternal life with the eternal God. Verse 2 brings us to the seventh day. God rested. Not that he was tired, but because all the universe was set in motion. His work of creation was done, was finished, and he looked at it and said, this is very good. Time was now in effect, and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Time involved also a declaration of days and seven days, intervals, weeks, and then the phases of the moon, months, and then 12 months, made a full circum, circum, well, circumventing of the sun by the earth in 365 days. So everything was set in motion, and it's still in that same motion today. 6,000 years that's recorded in the Bible history, and it's still working, still working. No wonder God looked at it and said it's very good. The best mechanics, the best machinery, the best physical action of anything that was ever created, and God did it in six days. Well, today is the seventh day. Today is the day that we worship. We commemorate the seventh day to honor God and also to look back at our past six days and rest. In our lives, we work, we work, we work. And on the seventh day, we should have accomplished something and be able to look back on it and say, that was a good week. And then give the day to the Lord. Today I can rest and thank God. We are created in the image of God. We are to make each day count as he did. In conclusion, simply study the word of God because... It's the only basis for truth in our lives. Man's assumptions and deceptions can only lead us away from our Heavenly Father. The study of his word brings us closer to him. The truth of God's word can only lead us to him. Always remember, if you know the Lord personally, you know the truth. And if you want to know what Jesus said, just simply turn to John 14 and 6 and read what he said. Let us pray as we conclude this study. Lord God, we thank you for this word that you've given us that we can look at and say, so that's how we came about. So that's where that came from. That's how that works. Because God did it. God said it. God put all things in motion. And Lord God, we thank you for our salvation. That plan of salvation that was also set in motion in that very beginning, in the halls of eternity, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, said, I will go and I will give myself for this man creature that we've made to save his soul, bring him to ourselves in eternity. All that, all planned and decided by the greatest architect, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your plan of salvation. In Jesus' name now we pray. Amen.